Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, just for those who don't know me, my name is Miss Amber. I create videos to help students who haven't been in college in a while or who are getting ready to enter into college pass their math entrance exams. This video is going to be for the AccuPlacer and so it's going to be a series of videos that I'm going to put out that is going to help you to practice for your test. Before we begin, I just want to say congratulations to all the students who have been commenting on my videos saying that they've passed. I'm so proud of you guys and it just feels really nice to be able to make a difference. If you're not following me yet, please give me a follow and let's get started. So the first question is, which of the following expressions is five times as much as the sum of R and S? So for some students, they can read this problem and they just understand it right away. They have no issues with it and they can move forward. If you're one of those students who have no issues with these types of problems, then go ahead and skip to the next problem. But for most of us, when we read problems like this, it's like, huh, what are they talking about? So math is just a language. When you understand the language, you are able to solve the problems. So when it says five times, that means you're multiplying something by the number five as much as the sum the word sum just means addition. And what are you adding? Of R and S. So you're adding R and S. So you're literally just trying to find what is five times the sum of R and S. So if we were to write this down, we could do five times R plus S. We can go ahead and look at our answer choices and see, okay, which answer choice is equal to this, what we just wrote down. So the first one, no. The second one, no. The third one, no. The third one looks similar, but it's written in a different way. It's written in a different order. Is it still the same answer? Yes. The way that you know this is that anytime you're writing a multiplication problem, that multiplication problem can be written either way. For example, 4 times 5 is equal to 20. You could also write it the opposite order, 5 times 4, and it'll still be equal to 20. So in this case, you could do 5 times r plus s, or you could do r plus s times 5, and you'll come up with the same answer. So the answer to this question would be D. It's very important that we know some other words and what their meanings are. So if you're taking notes, you should write what we discussed. Sum is addition. Times is multiplying. Some other words you may hear are product. You're going to have to multiply. If you see the words in all, that usually is saying that you're adding. And if you hear the word difference, that usually means you're subtracting. So if you want to go ahead and write these notes down and then so that if you get another problem that's very similar to this, but instead of them saying, what is the sum of R and S, they say, what is the difference of R and S? You can go to the word difference. It means subtraction. So it would be R minus S. I don't want you guys to just do one problem and then be able to do it with me and then get the same problem slightly different and then not know what to do with it. So that's why I wanted to give you guys a couple extra words that you can practice study for the next type of problems. All right, so now we're gonna go into problem number two. So problem number two is a problem that most students will be like, wait a minute, we don't know what to do. I personally, whenever I see fractions in a problem, I automatically think that it's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be hard, I'm gonna get the wrong answer. If you're the same way as me, you can go ahead and let me know, but that's how I always feel. And test makers also know that as well, that students are gonna see fractions, they're gonna get intimidated, and they're not gonna know what to do. But I wanna show you guys a trick where you can have fractions in an equation and you can get rid of them immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite the equation. One half X plus three half X plus one minus one over four is equal to five. So I want to get rid of the fractions because fractions just make everything more complicated. How do I get rid of the fractions? Well, I am going to look at the denominator, whatever number is on the bottom of each of the fractions. So it's two, two, 
and four. So two, two, and four are the denominators of those fractions. So it's two and four. I'm gonna try to figure out, okay, what is the least common denominator? What denominator can I use instead of two and instead of four? What is a denominator that I can try to use? So two, we're just gonna find the multiples of two. That just means if you count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10. Then we're gonna find the multiples of four. We're just gonna count by four. Four, eight, 12, 16. Now that I have a list of the multiples of two and the multiples of four, now I'm just gonna figure out, okay, which ones are common to both? So what numbers are common to both? I see four in each one, and that's all I see right now. So four is gonna be the number that I choose to use. If you have any questions about how to find least common multiples, how to find least common denominators, what I just did here, please leave a comment underneath my video and maybe I can make another video to address it, but we're just gonna continue to move on. So now that we've chosen the number four, we're gonna use the number four to get rid of these fractions. And so the way we can get rid of these fractions, I'm gonna rewrite this equation one more time. One half X plus three half X plus one minus one fourth equals five. I am going to multiply both sides of this equation by the number 4, the number we just found. By multiplying both sides of the equation by that number that we just found, we're going to be able to get rid of each fraction. And I want to show you how that's done. So we're going to start with 4 times 1 half x. So 4 over 1 times 1 over 2. 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So now, we instead of having 1 half x, we're just going to have 2x. Okay? Now we're going to do 4 times 3 half. So 4 over 1 times 3 over 2. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So now we have plus 6. I'm going to write everything in the parentheses, x plus 1. And then I'm going to multiply 4 times a negative 1 to negative 1 fourth. So 4 times negative 1 over 4. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 4 divided by 4 is just negative 1. So now I have a negative 1 out here. Bring down the equal sign. And then I'm going to do 4 times 5, which is equal to 20. Before I move forward, I know I'm gonna have some questions. So if you understood that, you could skip the video a little bit, but let's just pretend like we're all in class together and we have some students that may not understand what I just did. And so let's just be patient for them and let's just stick with it. So some questions that may arise is, Amber, why did you put four over one? I wrote four as four over one so that I can make it into a fraction so that it was easy to multiply. If you have a number times a fraction, always make that number into a fraction so it's easy to multiply the numerators and then to multiply the denominators. It's a simple way of multiplying fractions. That's why I kept saying four over one, four over one, four over one. Then I know the next question I'm gonna get is, how come I didn't multiply four times everything that's on the inside of this parentheses? Because I multiplied four times the three half, that number changed to six, and eventually that six is gonna be multiplied by everything on the inside. And that's why I don't have to change it right now. So now that we look at our equation, there's no more fractions. And that's our goal, because fractions can sometimes get confusing. So we have no more fractions. Now we can go ahead and finish this equation. Again, we're not gonna rush through this, we're just gonna take our time. So two X can be left by itself. And now we're gonna distribute the six. Six times x is six x. And then six times one is plus six. And then we're gonna bring down minus one equals 20. Once we distribute, after we distributed, meaning we took the six and multiplied it against everything in that parentheses, now we can go to the next step, which is combining like terms. So which terms are alike? 
2x and 6x. Those terms are alike. So 2x plus 6x is 8x. And then we can combine plus 6 minus 1. Those terms are alike. So that is equal to positive 5. And then we can bring down equals 20. So now we have 8x plus 5 equals 20. Now it's just a simple two-step equation. So let's go ahead and solve it. The goal with any equation is to get the x by itself. What numbers are causing the x to not be by itself? The 8 and the 5. So let's first get rid of the number that's not attached to the x, which is the 5. So to get rid of the 5, we have to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So we're going to subtract both sides by 5. Very simple. So we're going to be left with 8x is equal to 15. Now that we got rid of the 5, remember the goal is to get the x by itself. What number is causing the x to not be by itself? The 8. How do we get rid of that 8? Well, anytime you have a number that's written right next to a variable, they're being multiplied. So right now it's 8 times x. So if we want to get rid of something, a number that's written right next to a variable, instead of multiplying, we have to do the opposite to get rid of it. So the opposite of multiplying is what? Dividing. All right. So we're going to divide both sides by 8. So the 8s cancel out, and you're going to be left with x is equal to 15 divided by 8. If you look at your answer choices, because the answers are all in fraction form, we can leave our answer in fraction form. And look at that, the answer is gonna be C. C is equal to 15 over eight. So I'm hoping that going over this problem, I love that we were able to do the problem together, but the goal isn't just for us to be able to do problems together. The goal is for you to pass this test. You wanna get into college, you have to pass this test. So the goal is to be able to do this problem with me, but then to take some of the information that we learned together and now take it with you to your test. So what is some of the information that we learned together? We learned that if you have an equation that has fractions in them, get rid of the fractions. How do we get rid of the fractions? What do we do? Remember, we found the least common multiple or the least common denominator. We took the denominators two, two and four, and we found the common denominator between two and four. It happened to be the number four. And so what we did is we multiplied both sides of the equation by the number four, and we ended up with an equation that had zero fractions. It made it so much easier. If you start a problem that has fractions and you're gonna work with fractions the entire time, it's gonna make everything complicated and you may end up with the wrong answer. So my encouragement is to always get rid of the fractions and then it just becomes a two-step equation and you're able to solve it. If you have any questions, please comment below. Miss Amber, this is confusing. Miss Amber, why'd you do that? Miss Amber, you're explaining in a funny way. Please let me know in a positive way so that I can try to adjust how I'm explaining things or so that I can maybe answer another question for you. I really want you guys to do well, so I hope that this is helping you. Okay, problem number three. What is the number of grams in 500 kilograms? Okay, so anytime I see conversions. We're talking about different types of units of measurements, grams, kilograms. I know that we're going to have to set up a proportion. What is a proportion? A proportion just means two fractions that are set equal to one another. So proportion, two fractions set equal to each other. How did I know that we needed to use a proportion? Is because I see two units of measurements, grams and kilograms. Sometimes you'll see pounds and ounces, or sometimes you'll see other types of measurements like feet and inches. That tells me that I'm going to have to set up a proportion. Well, how do I set up a proportion? It's not difficult, but you just got to get used to writing on that scrap sheet of paper. So I am going to put one unit of measurement on top. I'll put the kilograms on top, and then I'm going to put the grams on the bottom. And I'm just going to write that on my piece of paper. No shame in my game. This just shows me how I'm gonna set up these two fractions. This first fraction is just gonna be the rate which they give us, and this is the rate. Rate just means for one. So for one kilogram, it's 1,000 grams. Again, I put kilograms on top, grams on the bottom. 
So now I'm going to fill in this second fraction with the information they give us and the information that's missing. So they tell us we have 500 kilograms. Where does that go? It goes on top, 500 kilograms. And it's asking us how many grams. So we don't know how many grams, so we're just gonna put X. So now that we have our two proportions, or we have our two fractions set up in a proportion, we're able to go ahead and solve it. Do you understand why we use the proportion? I want us to get used to this so that you guys can do this again on your own. So if you have any questions, please let me know. So let's go ahead and let's, whenever time, anytime we're solving a proportion, we have to cross multiply. Some people have heard of it as the butterfly method. Whatever method you've heard of, we're just gonna go ahead and use that method. I like to call it the butterfly method, which means we're gonna cross multiply. So on one side of the butterfly, we're gonna do 1000 times 500. And then on the other side, we're gonna do one kilogram times X, which is just equal to one X. So now 1,000 times 500, we could go ahead and take our calculator, 1,000 times 500, and that's equal to 500,000 is equal to one X. You can easily just drop that number one. And so X is equal to 500,000. So 500 kilograms is equal to 500,000 grams. So our answer would be D, 500,000.